Hello everybody and I wanted to check in with you today to do a book review on this which is called Deep Work, it's by Cal Newport. Last year I delivered a session as part of the CPD Blitz Roadshow for Charity Accountants Ireland and this was my suggested read for 2017. I had come across it around about the middle of last year as a recommendation from Deirdre Lyons, one of the most well-read people that I know. And she said, you really need to read this deep work. So I did. And the reason I'm only doing a book review now is because I wanted to, first of all, read it. And second of all, put the suggested activities into action and then tell you about it. So I've done that. And now that we are in October 2017, I wanted to tell you how I've got on. So first and foremost, what is this book about? Well, this book is about really doing proper deep work. And it's not about productivity. It's not about getting things done. It's about training your brain to massively expand its mental capacity. It's about solving big problems, dramatically increasing your achievement, and crucially, removing the blockages to achieving that achievement. So over the past year, and I, in fact, since I read it, so let's just say that would be around about the middle of last year, coming up to the end of the year. Um, how has this book affected me? Well, I was thinking about this in preparation for talking to you today. And first and foremost, the outputs that I have been able to work on this year as a result of pursuing strategies within the book um, include the following. So I have finished my master's, um, getting the results of that actually in the coming days. So hopefully that worked out well. Uh, finished that. I did a tax diploma this year and I got a distinction in that. And that was one of the hardest things that I've done mentally in a long time, probably since I studied CFA, which is Chartered Financial Analyst exams. And I finished those in 2014. So this that was really, it was tough in the brain. And I also, um, thus far this year, have done about 100 speaking events. We've run two uh, Sabatine Academies. I have also been working on delivering outputs for every month on Savvy Women Online, most of the ones we got. Um, also, we've been publishing articles on thepositiveeconomist.com and so on. Uh, naturally enough, in running a company, you have to produce proposals every day, every week, every month for new business. And that really is uh, a flavor of what I've done so far this year, as I say, coming towards the end of October 2017. That is a dramatic increase in years gone by. And I think that it has come from experience. It's come from knowing what works, knowing what doesn't. It comes from listening to the market. It comes from being aware of what your clients want. Um, but it also comes from figuring out how to manage all of the things that I learned in this book. So that has been the, the outputs, the visible outputs. Now, there's a lot of things that have happened underneath the surface that aren't really output focused. And there's a lot of things that we've been working on that aren't generating outputs yet that I will be telling you about in the months and years to come. So what I've told you about is, is a flavor, really. It's, it's a flavor. And when it comes to whether you might consider borrowing this book from the library or buying it on easons.com or downloading a PDF of it and reading it or borrowing it from somebody that you may know who's already read it and so on. Um, who, who might be interested in reading this book? I believe this book is really good for people who are output focused people who need to deliver outputs. Now, the author of this book, uh, Cal Newport, the author of this book, he is a professor. So his outputs are peer reviewed papers and other outputs in an academic setting that lead to his gaining a professorship. So he's very output focused. I've mentioned the outputs that I focus on. Now, I'm not totally output focused and I don't want to put a number on it because it wouldn't be fair and it changes from day to day. But a very significant part of what I do is output focused, like what I mentioned. It's publishing, it's speaking, it's engaging with people, it's producing content, it's producing proposals, it's producing new business, a lot of that, okay? But also a huge amount of what I do is people-focused. It's managing my team, dealing with people, interacting with people online, interacting with people offline, meeting with people, uh, a, a range of other different things that is escaping me right now because this video is live. But a lot of what I do is also very focused on people and that isn't 
suitable for this book, right? This book will not teach you how to interact better with people. In fact, it'll drive you away <laughs> from them. So I just want to make that point that this book is really focused for people who are output, output heavy. And for that aspect of my day and my life and my business, it's been, it's been excellent. Um, in particular, though, I can imagine what you want from investing the time you're going to invest in listening to me is you want to know, well, what are the insights that I have really put into practice in the company and in my own day and life? So a couple of things. Um, first of all, like I mentioned, this book is not about productivity. And I have I have done an awful lot of courses on productivity. I have read a lot about productivity. I have put an awful lot of things in practice to aid my productivity. This isn't about productivity. This is about really getting what matters done. It's about looking at the output that you want and reverse engineering an environment and your headspace and your resources to do that. That's what this is about. So it's not about getting things done. It's about getting the things that really matter done to a level and at a speed higher than what you would have thought previously. That's what this book has done for me. What it's also done is cut out a range of procrastinators and attention sappers. And ones I didn't even know were there. Now, I thought I was pretty vigilant to them. This book has really shown me uh, where they were hiding. So certainly that has, I've learned that as well. Um, I just want to tell you one story, actually. And that story has come specifically from reading this. And thank you again to Deirdre for recommending that I do so. Last February. I was at a trade show in San Francisco. Sorry, I was at a trade show in Orlando. I was over in Orlando with Vectorvest and I was working as part of a team there and I was at a conference in San Francisco. And when I looked at the times in between the two, there was only eight days. So I thought about, okay, well, will I come home and deal with the jet lag and all that comes with it? Or will I stay out there uh, somewhere in the States and maybe somewhere I hadn't been before and that kind of thing. So anyway, that's what I did. And I decided that through a range of different coincidences and connections that I won't go into here, um, I ended up anyway in Austin, Texas, the first week of February. And it was the first time in the six and a half years that Hayes Culleton had been in operation that I had taken a week out just to think. That's all. Now, it was a scary thing, actually, because, you know, I remember ringing Ardle when I had just checked into my apartment, a lovely apartment in, in Austin. And I remember saying, you know, what am I supposed to do now? It was me and a notebook and a pen. And off, right, no internet. I only allowed myself to go onto the internet a certain period of times because, of course, I could fool myself into thinking that I was being productive. And I really wasn't. So, and that are, you know, parts of the rules of deep work. So anyway, I, um, and I'm telling you, those of you who will try it, it's, it's a kind of a scary thing to do because it's you and the notebook and there's no access to achievement for a few days and and no access to that feeling of that I'm getting somewhere. So that's what I did. Anyway, I spent the week thinking on my own in a beautiful part of the world and it was just me in a notebook. And um, the results of that week were immense. Uh, three things happened. Three things happened that wouldn't have happened had I not taken that week and had I not taken that week completely out of my usual environment. Number one, I got the key crux of the dissertation thesis for the masters, right? So the entire crux, the entire proof of what I had wanted to develop for the masters, I found that week. The second thing that happened was that I pushed through a huge amount of output heavy items and results and thoughts and processes and just a real big push towards getting a lot done for um, Vectorvest when I was there. So I got through a huge amount. Uh, as many of you know, I'm managing director of Vectorvest Europe. So I, I really, really got through a huge amount of, of things that take time and effort and focus. And the third thing that happened was that I lit a fire under a new project that Ardell and I are working on. And I'll tell you about that again in the months and years to come. That's one of the things where the output from that particular week was visible to him and I but not to the rest of the world. And that's it. That'll take time. That that will take time, but I'm that's OK. So but again, none of those three things, would have, none of them, none of the three things would have happened because you just can't come up with the crux of the thesis sitting in your office or you can't light a fire under a completely new project unless you take the time to light the fire. And I'm sure I could come up with all manner of analogies and metaphors, but you don't want that. Um. so so that really that really was a defining point for the year. 
But it was also a defining time in my professional development because I realized that was the first time in six and a half years. And sorry, to go further, it was the first time ever I had taken a week out to do that. So I've now planned, um, I've now asked Caroline um, to put that week every single year in my diary to make sure that I take a week out and do so. Now, the most wonderful Deirdre McLone from Harvey's Point has, has said to me, Susan, what are you doing going to Texas? Come up to Donegal. So I may well um, take some time out next year, specifically in Harvey's Point in Donegal, in her Lakeshore suite uh, to do that, because that is another place where I've really learned how to, how to, Harvest Point is a play, really wonderful place to digitally detox and of course it is the most wonderful setting for, for doing so. So anyway, apart from all of that, the, the other thing I want to tell you is that this book, a Deep Work by Cal Newport. By the way, I'm just giving you this book review. Cal Newport has no idea that I'm doing this. By the way, he totally disagrees with social media so there's a the fear of him being here and finding this out. So I'm only telling you this not because of any sponsorship or any product placement or anything like it. I'm simply here telling you about this um, because I think it's a benefit to, it's been a benefit to me. And if it's been a benefit to me, I want to tell you about it. Um, okay, so the other thing that I want to tell you that two other things that this book has done for me. One is that I have learned how to create the environment that facilitates my deep, my real deep work. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here um, in this environment that you can see here behind me. I'm actually at the moment in Ballylag, an organic farm in Belfast. And it's a little bit outside of Belfast. Here is one of my if not my favorite place in the country, in the island of Ireland, to work deeply. There's something about Ballylag and Organic Farm that enables me to work incredibly well. Um, I sit in this, this specific room, so this is the room that's available to guests. You can see the wall of books behind me. Last night I was actually reading about the role of the Prime Minister in the UK and I was reading about Prime Ministers back to 1945. And it was right up until 97 and, of course, which was around the era of Tony Blair. So I was I was reading that last night and that's one of the rules of deep work is that you completely decompress the night before you get into a real deep session in the morning. So here is fantastic, obviously, with, with all the books. Um, my own house is starting to look like this now at the moment. Such is the library I'm accumulating. Um, but also there's the coziness of the fire that's over there. There's unlimited coffee that's over there. Uh, Patricia, the owner here, knows that I, I love my Americanos. Uh, there's one over here as well, actually, to my left. Um, but there's also the piece of the countryside. I'm on a farm and you can't hear anything. Um, you can't hear anything at all except your own thoughts, which is, again, what you need for deep work. But also there's a purity in the air and a purity of the environment by, the, by virtue of the fact that everything is organic here. And it is about 14 miles outside of Belfast on the Antrim coast. And it's so it's well away from the city. And when I need to be in Belfast, uh, again, as many of you know, I'm in Belfast regularly. Um, we're doing a huge amount of work here in Northern Ireland for, across a range of different projects, which I absolutely love. I love being here. But specifically, it's Ballylag and Organic Farm is where I'll go when I need to really think and really work deeply. Um, so I started a deep work session here this morning at half seven uh, after I had followed all the rules in, in Cal Newport's work. Cal Newport's book around deep work. I settled in here last night and this morning I started at half seven and I have really focused on things again that I couldn't do in my own office. Not that I physically can't, obviously I can, but when you're in your existing environment, you do what you're used to doing. It's a great place for me to have a huge burst of productivity. I can close the door in my office and invent in DCU and I can sit there and I can burst through sending out invoices and I can, you know, follow up on a range of emails and I can, I'll be on my Slack channel and I'll talk to everybody who's in the company and all that sort of thing. And I talk to clients and I'm on Skype calls and I'm on all sorts of things. I can really be productive in my office, but to deep work, I can't. So that's why I specifically, for example, come here. Now, there's some of you know my deep work spots uh, around the world. Um, but here, and that's the reason I wanted to do this this live from here, this Facebook live from here, is because I want to show you physically where, where I come to do so. So that's the, the fifth thing that I've learned from, from this book is, is how to cultivate an environment. But the other thing, right, and this is kind of key, uh, probably most important of anything that I'm about to tell you, what I've also learned here is I've learned how to facilitate my mind for deep work and that there are specific strategies. What I like about Cal is that me, that I'm now on first name terms with him, as I say, he's never heard of me. But uh, what I have specifically learned how to do in deep work is that I have learned how to how to facilitate my mind for this. So how to hone my concentration, sharpen my focus, eliminate distractions. And he's ruthless. He's ruthless 
on how to do that. Um, I've learned how to shape my diary. And of course, um, Caroline helps me to do that all the time. Sorry, she does that all the time. And she she too was pretty ruthless on it, I have to say. Um, I've learned how to, um, how, what's the, I don't even know the verb for this. How I have not planned my downtime, how I have developed my downtime, how I how I pursue my downtime. There's a, there's a word here that I can't think of, but anyway. Uh, how I use my downtime, I suppose, to facilitate my uh, my my deep work, my shutdown ritual. Now that's a, a term that he called, that he describes in the book. So any of you who reads it, you know what I mean. How I shape my exercise, my time in the car, my time reading, my use of my phone. That's another one that he's pretty clear on. My use of the internet and also my discipline, my hard discipline about what really matters. Uh, Cal Newport also has a, has a term. Uh, around that and it's called the law of the vital few again that's that's something that that, that you'll see within it uh, also my method of email communication and also how to quantify depth so that's my book review uh, as I say it's been very very useful for me thanks so much to Deirdre for suggesting it to me there there will be a blog post on thepositiveeconomist.com about this so I will it will be on there. I'm also going to feature this particular video and the blog post in next month's newsletter. Many of you uh, on this page are also uh, subscribers to that. When I say subscribers, that's free, by the way. And you can check out that on thepositiveeconomist.com. So again, just in summary, what deep work has shown me is how to get what really matters done. It's shown me how to eliminate procrastination and, and attention sappers that I didn't really know existed. Um, I told you my story about my week in Texas and I have since taken days out. I've taken a day out of the Cliffs of Moher recently. Deirdre, as I mentioned at Harvey's Point, has suggested I go up to Donegal next year, if not for a week, if for a couple of days. Caroline has my week in the diary next year for wherever that location, that week long location will be. I've learned how to cultivate my environment. And as I mentioned, Ballylag and Organic Farm here in Belfast is one of my, if not my favorite place in the island of Ireland to do so. And finally, I've learned how to shape my mind. So on that note, I'm going to finish this. Um, I'm now off to work on the people side of everything today. Um, I have two meetings today in, Bal in Belfast City and there they are people heavy and output heavy. And um, thank you very much, Cal Newport. Thank you very much, Deirdre McGlone. And thank you very much to Deirdre Lyons for suggesting that I read this book. And most of all, thank you for tuning in today. Best wishes and best wishes specifically for your deep work. Bye.